So good morning to all of you. Already we have started the chapter electricity in the previous video. And uh, we have done, we have discussed already about this electric charge, electric field, electric field intensity, electric potential and potential difference and I have given certain formulae uh, like uh, first one which I have given that is electric potential difference that is V is equals to W upon Q from this we have got W is equals to V into Q so Using this equation, we can find out the work. And also, as we know, work and energy are equivalent quantities. So, we can write energy also that is equals to V into Q. Now, on the basis of these two formulae, we are going to solve certain numerical questions. The first question. So, write the question first. The first question is that a charge of 10 coulomb is taken from a point A to a point B such that point A is at a potential of 10 volt and point B is at potential of 60 volt then you are supposed to find out the work done as well as you may be asked to find the energy gained by this 10 coulomb charge when it, is, when it is taken from point A to point B. So, if work, you have to calculate work done, then first thing you need to do, just V is not potential, but it is potential difference in that equation. Uh, or we can say equation number one. So, V is potential difference. So, here potential difference is 60 minus 10 and that is 50 volt. And so work done will be how much? It will be V into Q and that is 50 into 10. And that is how much? 500 Joule. In the same way, same is the formula for energy. So if someone asks you that how much energy this 10 coulomb charge will gain, when it is taken to from point A to point B, then straight away you can say, sir, it will gain 500 Joule of energy. So, these two types of questions can be asked based on these two formulae. But remember, sometimes what they do, they give you potential difference. When potential difference is given, then you need not to find out what is this difference at all because you will, giving only, you will be given only one value and that is the value of potential difference. And when potential difference is given, you directly multiply with the charge and you will get the work done. Or if you have to find out energy, directly multiply the potential difference with the charge and you will get the energy. Okay. Next topic is electric current. Now, we have heard about different types of currents, no? like air current, no? water current, and the rivers, no? and the ocean. Uh, similarly, here there is electric current. Now, what is electric current? Have you ever uh, visited a river bank to see the River current. River current 
is produced by a static water or moving water? Obviously, it's moving water. And similarly, the air current is produced when there is a wind is blowing. That is called air current. So, for producing current, flow is required. And which current you are going to produce over here or observe, study here? It is electric current. So, what should flow? Obviously, the charge must flow. The flow of charge causes electric current. Now, what is the definition? Please note it down. The amount of charge flowing through a particular cross section of a conductor per unit time is called electric current. Full stop. It is a scalar quantity because it doesn't have direction. No, it has direction. It is the scalar quantity which has got magnitude and direction both. But it does not follow the laws of vector algebra. It follows the simple arithmetic rules. And that's why it is a scalar quantity. It is denoted by either a small i or capital I. You can use any one of them. No problem at all. And its unit is ampere, which is denoted by capital A. It is ampere and denoted by capital A. Ampere was a scientist. After his name only, the unit has been named. And it is given by I is equals to Q upon T where Q is the charge and T is the type. So you can say it is nothing but charge flowing through a particular cross section of conductor by time taken. And that will give you current. So from here, what we can write, can we write 1 ampere is equals to 1 coulomb upon 1 second. Can we write this? And once we can write this, now we can define 1 ampere. We can define 1 ampere. So now you write the definition of 1 ampere. On the basis of this expression, when one coulomb of charge flows through a particular cross section of a conductor in one second, then the current through the conductor is said to be 1 ampere. Now, the next topic is Ohm's law. Okay. So, the next topic is that is Ohm's law. Ohm was a scientist and he has given this law. That's why this law is named after his name only. Now, the question arises what this law states about. What this law states about, before going to that, uh, let's, uh, let us discuss uh, simple activity. Suppose we take a small LED bulb like this. This is our LED bulb. And if we connect a dry cell over here, dry cell, what you will find? Obviously, you will find that 
the LED bulb is not going to glow. Why? Because one dry cell, it provides how much potential difference? 1.5. You might have seen it is written on the dry cell. It is very common thing. Uh, very regularly we can come across. No? So now what you did, you just added one more dry cell over here, connected one more dry cell over here and what you found uh, that now the LED bulb started glowing. Nice. Now suppose you decided to add one more dry cell over here. What you will find? It is going to glow even more brighter. Now, why it is glowing? When it is not glowing, that means very less current is flowing. And the potential difference was how much? 1.5 volt. Because one dry cell is 1.5. One dry cell, it is 1.5 volt. So, two dry cells were connected, then it started glowing. Because 1.5 plus 1.5 volt, it became 3 volt. And which is the minimum voltage required? or minimum potential difference required by this LED bulb to glow. And when you added one more, then it started glowing more brighter because it got 1.5 volt more. And now it has become total 4.5 volt. So that means brightness, as I told you, brightness depends on the amount of current flowing through the LED bulb. So that means current is increasing. And when current is increasing, when we are increasing this number of cells, and when the number of cells we are increasing, then potential difference is also increasing. Now, if we reduce the potential difference, if we, re we remove the cells gradually, what will happen? The brightness will decrease, and this indicates that current is decreasing through the LED. Now, I, re I remove this also. What, what will happen again? Again, it will start stop glowing. It will stop glowing. Because the current is not sufficient to make it glow. That means when the potential difference is increasing, then the current is increasing. So brightness of the LED bulb is increasing. And when the potential difference is decreasing, then the current is decreasing. And hence the brightness of the LED is decreasing. So can we say that potential difference is directly proportional to current? So this is how this is the statement. Uh, this is the first thing which we get from the Ohm's law. Now the question comes: What is the Ohm's law? Please write the statement. The statement is that it states that current flowing through a conductor. is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across the ends of the conductor. At constant temperature. Full stop. This is the statement of the Ohm's law. Now from this statement clearly we get V is proportional to Y. And we know that when there is a proportionality what happens? We get graph like this. The straight line slanting on X axis like this. And now whenever there is a proportionality what we do? We remove the proportionality we put a constant. Here, R is constant and R is known as resistance of the conductor. Now, what is the resistance? Resist, to resist, no? It is opposing the current. So, the amount of opposition a conductor offers to the current is called its resistance. Now you say, sir, if conductor is offering 
uh, position to the current, then why it is conductor? Hmm. It is relative thing, no? The conductors or the materials which has very high resistance, very less current flows through them. And which has low resistance, large amount of current flows through it very easily. No? And that's why they are called good conductors. And the materials which have high resistance, through them less current flows. And that's why they are not so good conductors, but they are okay. They are conductors. Okay? So, resistance is the property of the conductor due to which it opposes the flow of current through it up to certain extent. Okay? Not completely. It's not like that it is going to block the current. If it is going to block the current, then it is not a conductor. So it allows the current, but it offers some resistance. Like friction. Friction doesn't stop you. If you are starting the vehicle, it's not like that friction. Obviously, it is opposing your wheels of your vehicle, but it never stops. It, it doesn't stop you know, immediately. If proper force is applied, obviously, the body is going to move. It has got its limitation. In the same way, the resistance of the conductor also it is limited. Now, it is a scalar quantity. Obviously, it is denoted by R. And it changes with temperature. And that's why it is very important to add that last sentence that is at constant temperature because if temperature is not constant then r will not remain constant if r will not remain constant then this will not be holding and then your graph will not come stately it will come a curve okay so the uh, whatever we will study in class 10 that is for constant temperature the temperature is not going to change in class 10 at least Okay, so nothing to worry about it. Okay. A resistance a scalar quantity and it is denoted by R. Its SI unit is Ohm after the name of the scientist that is Ohm. And it is denoted by a Greek alphabet called Omega. The, the symbol is known as Omega. O-M-E-G-A. Omega. Okay. And the unit is Ohm. Now, now, we are going to discuss about the factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. So, resistance of a conductor depends on various factors. First factor, it depends, resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. First thing, if the conductor is very, very long, then its resistance will be high. If the conductor is very, very short, then its resistance will be very, very low. So, resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. More the length, more the resistance. Less the length, less the resistance. Okay. The second thing, resistance is inversely proportional to the area of cross-section of the conductor. Now, the question arise, er, arise here or the doubt arises in the mind. What is area of cross-section? Area, already we know okay, what is area. But what is area of cross-section? What the, what the cross-section is actually? See, we look at this chalk, no? This is called cross-section of this chalk. In the same way, most of the wires are cylindrical in the same. And this is a circular part. So, this cross, they have got circular cross-section. If rectangular wire you get like, like this, no? Mm -hmm. Then here you will find rectangular cross section. Okay. Whatever shape is there, doesn't matter. This is called cross, cross section. And area of this cross section is called area of cross section. Okay. Now, if the area of cross section is more, then what do you think? The chalk will be thinner or thicker? If area of cross section is more, Obviously, if area of cross section is more, we know that area will be equal to pi r square. So, if area is more, then radius is more. 
When radius is more, then chalk is thicker. Okay? And when radius is less, then area is less, then chalk is thinner. So what will happen? When area is more, then resistance is less. That means when the conductors are thicker, thicker conductor you are taking, then the resistance will be less for that. If you are taking very thin wire, then what will happen? It will have very high resistance. So it's better to take thicker wire, no? Rather than taking thinner wire. So this is the now third thing. This resistance depends on the material. Material of the conductor. That means the conductor you have got, it is made up of silver, copper, aluminium or iron. If it is made up of silver, then obviously it will have less resistance. Because this is called resistivity. We will discuss about it and it depends on the material only. Rather, material and temperature, but temperature is not in our context, so we are talking about the material only. It depends on material. For silver, it is less. For uh, copper, it is little bit more than that. So, copper will offer more resistance than silver. For aluminium, it will of it is again more. So, it will offer you more resistance. Okay, and for Iron, again the resistivity is more, so it is going to offer more resistance. So better conductor you are taking, less will be the resistance. So it depends on material also. So if we combine all these three, one, two, three, then finally what we get? Finally we will get, okay. So uh, finally we get R is equals to rho into L by A. This is the expression which we are going to get. So resistance depends on the length of the conductor. It increases with the increasing length, decreases the decreasing length. Second thing, it is inversely proportional to area of cross section. So as the thickness of the wire increases, the resistance decreases. When the thickness of the wire decreases, then the resistance increases. So inversely proportional. And it is directly proportional to the material of the conductor, the resistivity of the conductor. That means if you are taking good conductor, then its resistivity will be low and then it, its resistance will be low. If you are taking bad conductor or okay, just conductor, then what will happen? Its resistivity will be higher and so its resistance will be higher. It is pronounced as RHO rho. It is a Greek alphabet. And it what it represents, the physical quantity it represents is a resistivity of material of the conductor, not the resistivity of conductor, but resistivity of material of the conductor. So it is a property of material basically. So here we can define resistivity. resistivity. With the help of this expression we can define. Please if you want to write, you can write. Uh, when a potential difference of one volt is applied across A unit cube of a material comma then whatever resistance it offers to the flow of current through it at constant temperature is called its resistivity. 
full stop it is denoted by rho and has si unit ohm meter or you can write omega meter For conductors, you will find it is found in the range of 10 to the power minus 8. Okay. Uh, so, it's got, it has got very small value. And it also depends on temperature. As what happens, resistance as well as resistivity, both is directly proportional to temperature. You will increase the temperature, the resistance will increase. Because with increasing temperature, the resistivity will increase. So this was about the resistivity and the resistance of a conductor. Now we are going to take the questions on this. Okay. So many of times it has been seen that no, the children face problem in the graphical questions. So here on the, the question, graphical question, there are three metals or conductors. There are three conductors A, B, and C. And for these three conductors, here is the potential current graph. Now, you have been asked that uh, to uh, to write the this uh, conductors in the ascending order of their resistance. Ascending order that is increasing order of their resistance. So first you need to identify which has got more resistance and which has got the least resistance. Okay, like that. So how to identify that? Now see from Ohm's law we know that V is equals to R I. So R is equals to what? R is equals to V upon I for a given conductor. Now if you See from here, V upon I, if you draw a triangle here, what you will find? This is V and this is I. So you will get V upon I for this one. If you want V upon I for this one, for the same I, see I is same for both, that is common. V is more for this, this is this much. So obviously V upon I is going to be more for conductor B and it is going to be less for conductor A because if suppose this point is suppose I am taking M okay and suppose I extend this C also okay something like this so here it will meet somewhere here okay C is somewhere here suppose now what will happen if you will find that for A V upon I is a smaller quantity or I should say smallest quantity for conductor B when you are taking V upon I for same I then what you will get more value okay suppose uh, this is conductor C okay suppose this is uh, this points I am going to name okay uh, this is M so this is N okay this is L and this is P so what you can write this is uh, M N upon OM. This is resistance of conductor A. What is resistance of conductor B? The resistance of conductor B is it is LM upon OM. And what is the conduct resistance of conductor C? That is PM upon OM. What you can see? OM is common in all. Same. Now, which is the longer in this numerators? Because when denominator is same, then the fraction which has got larger numerator has larger value. And which, whose numerator is smaller has smaller value. So here it's very easy to compare because PM, obviously it is longer than other two. So resistance that is RC is more and than RA and RB. Now what about RA and RB? In case of RA and RB, LM is greater than NM. So, as LM is greater than NM, so RB is greater than RA. 
So if you want to write in increasing order or in ascending order of resistance, what you can write? Resistance of uh, A is least, resistance of B is more than that and resistance of C is maximum. So this is the increasing order of resistance you can identify from the graph. Remember one thing you have to keep constant. But there is a problem. Here in the graph, you have to see where on the x-axis it is potential difference is there or current is there. If the things are reversed, then the story will be reversed. Suppose potential is taken this side and current is this side. Then the whole thing will get reversed. Then the fraction whose value will be less will have higher resistance. Because the resistance is V upon I. If V is the side, then this will become V. And V is, will is, v is same for all three. Our uh, current is different. So now, if the current is different, so, so for the conductor for whom the current is maximum, the resistance will be least. And the conductor for whom, for which the current is less, the resistance will be high. So the story will get totally inverted, no? Totally reversed. So it's better to see what quantities are given at which axis and then it's very easy to compare and tell right in ascending order or in descending order no problem at all okay